today we're gonna create a 2D top-down character movement and let the player rotate in the direction of our mouse while using Unity's new input system. Welcome, I am Valvary. I start with a new 2D project. I used assets from a Kenny asset pack and you can also download the old project from GitHub. Both links are in the description. Install the new input system via the package manager. If you have never used the new input system, I recommend checking out the basic tutorials in this series. But you can also follow along. Let's define the input by creating an input action file. I add an action map called Gameplay and define a movement action in there. It's from type value and represents a vector 2 for a 2-axis movement. Add a new 2D vector composite and map it to your movement keys. I use WASD. Hit save and close your window. Now we let Unity create a C-sharp class. Change the file location accordingly to your needs. Since it is a script, I set its location to the script folder. We want the player to move with a widget body 2D, so we need to add the component to our player object. Set the gravity to zero or else your player will fall down. Also set the linear track to something above zero. We will come to this later. Now let's create a script called player movement and attach it to the player object. Open the script. At first, make sure to import the package for the new input system. Now we want an object of the auto-generated input class. Make sure to name the type of this variable exactly like your script's class or file name. In our awake function, we will tell Unity to instantiate a new object from this class. Now we can enable the player input in the onEnable function and also disable it in the onDisable function. Create a new function which will handle the movement input. I call it onMovement and set its parameter like I do. At the moment Unity does not know that it should call the onMovement function when we press one of our movement keys. We can change this by adding those lines which will define the reference between our action and our method. If you are confused how this works, check out this video. From our movement input, we can now receive director2, which we defined in the action input file. Since we want it available in the fixed update function, I'll declare this variable outside of our function at the beginning of our class. Add a reference to your rigid body 2D so that we can apply the movement there. In the fixed update function, we will now move the rigid body. One possibility is to simply set the velocity of the rigid body to our movement vector. I'll also add a speed variable, a serialized field, so that we can change the value from the Unity inspector and multiply it with our movement vector. Now we can move faster. When you now test your input, the player moves. Currently there is no real acceleration. When pressing and releasing the keys, the movement is immediately there or stops immediately. This may fit your needs, but if it's not your goal, let's change it. Instead of changing the rigid body velocity, we will apply a force to the rigid body. The addForce function takes beside the vector the second argument, the mode, which is per default force. An impulse is used for throttle pulses like jumps. So we are fine with the force and can leave it empty therefore. When testing this you can now see the different behavior. I'll increase the speed and you can now see the acceleration. If your player doesn't stop moving, 
make sure you set the linear drag to something above zero, or else he will glide forever. If you want to learn more about Richard Buddy's drag, check out this video linked in the info box. By simply increasing and adjusting the linear drag and the movement speed, you can get a good enough result for the basic movement. So, let's add the rotation. Switch to your input actions file and add a new action. The type is also value and its control type is also a vector2. Change the default added simple binding to the mouse position. You can search for mouse. Hit save and let's switch back to our movement script. Duplicate your on movement function and rename it accordingly. We want to save the mouse position in a new variable, which we will also declare at the top of our class. Now we can duplicate the performed event of our movement and rename it to our mouse position action. But currently the mouse position is in screen space. That's the far bigger view you usually get when adding a canvas. We want to convert it to the world space our player is standing in. I add a new serialized field from type camera. The camera is used to correctly convert screen space to world space. So add this function to your mouse position assignment. Inside our fixed update, we will now calculate the facing direction by subtracting the player's current position from our mouse position. Now we can change the rigid body's rotation to the new angle. Calculate this angle by using the mathf atten2 function. This will return the angle between the x-axis and the vector2, based on the y and the x-axis. Note the different order here. The return is given in radians. We will convert it to degrees with the mathf red 2 deck function. Back in Unity, don't forget to assign your camera to the camera slot in your player's movement script. That's it. When you now test your game, the player will look in the direction of your mouse pointer and can move freely along the X and the Y axis. Based on the direction your player asset is facing, this may not work for you at the moment. If your player is facing upwards, subtract 90 degrees or downwards at them. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.